Hello and welcome to Salmon Falls Creek Canyon in South Central Idaho. This is sort of an underappreciated and quite, it really isn't remote, but there's just not a lot of activity here. And yet I've always just been enthralled by not just the scenery here, but the geology. It, it's on a scale comparable to the Snake River Canyon. This is one of the tributaries that flows south, uh, which is this way to the right, from Nevada northward and joins the Snake River maybe uh, 10 or so miles downstream. We're looking east here uh, and we're looking at a section of the canyon known as Sinking Canyon. And so this is a section of the canyon where there's some interesting and also recent geologic activity taking place here. You can kind of see that the landscape here is a bit chaotic. It's kind of jumbled. There's outcrops of dark rock, which is basalt, but it doesn't have like a, there's kind of hummocky and hilly terrain down here. It's very irregular. There's even a little lake uh, tucked back in over here at the bottom of this cliff face. So it looks a little different than other places in the Snake River Canyon. Um, and what we have here is we have some active mass wasting going on. So we have some landslides and other processes that are taking place. Most of what you're seeing here across the canyon are previous landslides that have slid from the eastern face of the canyon uh, to the west uh, and effectively impinging and pushing Salmon Falls Creek towards us here, which is to the west. Again, this is called Sinking Canyon. Uh, this section, there was a, a slide in this area in 1937. But the feature we're gonna focus on here, and we're gonna start with this big picture view here, but I am gonna take you out onto the slide itself because there's really some remarkable features to be seen there, is this little section of cliff here that you can see is clearly down dropped from the rim. So this little flat section that has moved down uh, from the rim of the canyon is what is known as the bluegill slide. And this has an interesting uh, history and story to it. There's some cliffs along the lower a band here, and this is an active, well was, an active rock climbing site. And then in the late 90s, climbers noticed that the cracks were kind of changing. The rocks seemed to be um, changing, you know, month to month. And they alerted the BLM and it was quickly realized that this was a, a, a cliff and a slope that was actively moving. And so the climbing ceased in that area. They got some monitoring equipment out on the site and everything you're seeing there is the movement that's taken place uh, since 1998. So pretty remarkable that, you know, in less than 25 years, you're looking at about 30, um, 30 feet or so, about nine or 10 meters of vertical displacement, uh, which will look much more impressive when we get out over there. And then it's horizontally moved towards you, towards the viewer here, uh, maybe four or five meters, about 15 or so feet horizontally. In the process of this whole slope moving, it's not just moved at the, at the top here, it's actually moved down here in the valley and it's actually caused the toe of the slide to move upwards. And by moving the toe upwards a little bit, it's actually diverted the creek. You can actually go down there and see where the creek used to flow. And now the creek's flowing in a new path, in a constricted path, and that has backed up a lake behind it. You can just make it out right through here. Uh, and if you can't see that, I'll show you once we get around to the other side, but you'll see trees that are flooded over there. So really a remarkable feature in part because it's so recent that this is something taking place on a human type of time scale. They got some monitoring equipment out there, uh, the BLM and USGS, I believe some ISU geologists as well. And I think at its, at its height in the early 2000s, the uh, measured movement of this slide was something in the neighborhood of 10 to 15 centimeters per month um, which seems slow but geologically that's pretty rapid and cumulatively we can see some of the the big effects there and so let's look at the geologic setting here and see if we can make sense of of what actually has taken place and why this area of the canyon is prone uh, so so readily to slope failure and mass wasting and so as we look at it, we see a lot of dark rock. That's all basalt. Those are lava flows from local shield volcanoes. Very similar to what we see throughout the Snake River Plain. But as we look over here against this cliff face, um, where else? Uh, let's see, back straight across here. There's a little bit right in here. But you can see some lighter colored material cropping out just below maybe a couple hundred feet or so 
of basalt over there. And those are sediments. Those are sediments of the Glens Ferry Formation, the lake bed deposits and stream and shoreline deposits that surrounded ancient Lake Idaho about three to four million years ago. So we're far enough west that the geology below the basalt is changed to a different rock type. A lot of the Glens Ferry Formation has not just sands, but also a lot of clay rich materials. And clay is prone to moving when it's when it becomes uh, saturated, when it becomes wet. Um, and so we could also discuss maybe some of the factors that led to this. Of course, Snake River Plain in Idaho, up on the rim there, there's a lot of agriculture going on. And agriculture means irrigation. So we're pumping water from the ground or other surface water bodies, putting it on the crops to grow. But that water then is percolating through the ground, working its way quickly through the basalt, but then moving uh, when it hits those sediments there, they're not as permeable or porous. And so it tends to create a situation where there's a lot of pore pressure built up in the rocks. And so that makes the, the substrate uh, quite slippery and prone to failure. And so that's probably a very big reason why this section of Salmon Falls Creek Canyon is known as Sinking Canyon and why we have active landslides and mass wasting going on here. We also have the stream or the creek at the bottom, uh, which presumably was further towards the center of the valley, but has been pushed over because of the slides. Uh, but that may have been undercutting the slope at the downstream end there. And so let's go to um, a little diagram I've got here that'll show you sort of the cross section of, of what's going on here. So we have, this is known again as the bluegill slide. Slide. This is, um, I didn't draw directions on here. This would be east to west going this way. So this would be looking to the south. So we've got basalt at the rim, uh, the Glens Ferry Formation and the sediment sitting below there. Here's the actual movement of the bluegill slide. So it's moved things down vertically, again, about uh, 30 feet or so. It's also moved things to the west, uh, maybe as much as 15 or so feet. In the process, what's that cr that's created at the back end at the uphill end of the slide is a large escarpment and actually a, a kind of a crack or a crevice that I'll show you once we get over to that side of the slide. This is what we call a rotational slide or a slump. The failure plane or the, the, the surface of, on which this slide is occurring is a curved surface. And what we typically see with these is a sort of a stair step pattern. So the geometry here of the land kind of stepping down to this point um, is highly indicative of this type of movement here. And then as this material's moved down at the downstream end by the toe, this is where there's been a little bit of uplift. And then we can see the creek now reestablishing its channel here, but it actually used to flow here, but this area has been uplifted. The water has cut a new, newer, easier path um, just to the west of it. And then in some of these low areas, we have lakes forming, uh, presumably fed by groundwater that's coming through the basalt and maybe through the Glens Ferry Formation. That's what's sustaining uh, these lakes here. But just kind of a hopefully simple cross-sectional view to help you understand uh, this feature here. So we'll shut this one down for now and I will take you out onto the bluegill slide to show you some of the really impressive features out there. It's just really quite a treat of just uh, tension cracks, and really active processes that are still going on over there. Okay, now we are on the east side of the Bluegill Slide. So it begins just above me here. This is actually one of the scarps, one of the places where it's detaching from the hillside. We're gonna head out that way here in a minute, but I thought I'd start with a, a nice overview of what things look like from this side. So I think one of the, the cool features here is you can see that we ha basically have a lake down here with, with trees in it. So this is all the result of this slide moving down to the west, the toe of the slide raising the old channel for Salmon Falls Creek, uh, diverting it to create a new one, and then constricting and impinging the flow of the creek through such a narrow um, pass that it's backing up quite a bit of water in Salmon Falls Creek, inundating the canyon, bo canyon bottom, uh, where we can see some of these dead trees here, and creating this lake. Uh, in a way, this does create a little bit of a hazard, because if we had this lake uh, catastrophically 
fail and move downstream. Uh, there are some homes further downstream as well, some businesses uh, along Highway 30 that could possibly be jeopardized. But again, we're looking uh, to the west across Salmon Falls Creek. Uh, now we're kind of turning towards the north and we can see again this, this lumpy terrain, the slide deposits. This is Bluegill Lake down here, a little fishing spot. And then this basalt cliff, you can actually see some of the recent rock fall. We'll get to another spot that looks a little better, but this whole cliff face is just being pushed outward uh, or was at some point by the slide. I'm not sure how much this slope is moving today. Um, it was again moving at its fastest maybe in the early 2000s or so. I believe it's slowed down a little bit, but it's still an unstable slope. So we're going to head out uh, onto the slide itself, um, moving here to the north. Uh, I'll probably let the video run here for a second and then I'll probably shut it off and show you a few key features. So the first thing we come to up here are these large uh, fractures, just openings in the ground. This again is the, the start of the head scarp or the detachment point for the whole slide movement. So you can actually see back here this big open fracture where the basalt is actually moving away from the rest of the slope here. We'll let this go a little bit further. Um, actually splits into a couple different fractures up here. And then we get to a couple places where, you know, even getting across here, you've got to kind of be careful a little bit. There's actually two ways to go here. Um, I'm going to take you first up on top and then we'll come back and go out onto the slide itself. But we can see out here some of the displacement between where the ground was to your right and where it's dropped down to the left. And as we move further to the north, uh, the displacement and the extension or the opening between the two just gets greater. So let's head up top on top of the slide and the main head scarp or detachment points up here. And so I believe there was a spot somewhere out here. This was the old back in the day and maybe some locals would know better than I would. This was the site of the old Buell landfill or maybe it was just a place where people came out and dumped some of their trash. Uh, but you can see here, you know, a box spring, old box spring down here and places where the the ground opening up has sort of revealed <clears throat> some of the debris and such. I think there's, if I remember right, there's a car down in here. It's really one of the more spectacular sights. I've just always enjoyed coming out here. Yeah, there's what's left of a car uh, down here. I believe if we go this way, there's maybe some old appliances down there. So we'll take this out to this point and then I'll take you down onto the slide itself. But there's a bit of a small trail here. Um, and I've been out here a number of times. I've even brought students out here. Um, in general, if you kind of use some common sense, stick to a few of the established paths and stay away from the, the edge, it's not a particularly a hazardous place to come look at. Um, part of this may be on private property. I have permission from the landowners um, and so probably need to contact them to access any of this. But I believe a large chunk of it, especially down in the canyon, is on BLM ground. Um, we actually get a nice view here of some of the soil, uh, the basalt, down below, but then there's actually a gravel horizon in between the two that we'll get a better view of a little further down. Again, some of the historic 
trash. <laughs> um, don't know what's in there. Looks like some appliances, maybe a stove, a lot of rusty metal. Uh, and we're eventually going to get our way, make our way out to uh, a very scenic point that will give you a good sense of how much horizontal and vertical movement has occurred um, across the top of this slump or rotational slide to show you how much it's dropped. And again, remember that this all began around 98, 99. So we're looking at uh, a little less than 25 years and really less than that because it's kind of looked the same for the last, I don't know, 10, 15 years. So probably most of the movement that we're seeing here in terms of displacement all took place within maybe five to ten years or something on that scale okay so i think we're we're about here this little escarpment kind of peters out in terms of displacement and the bigger spot where we see much more movement uh, is just up here we'll head a little bit further i'll stay back from the edge make sure no one gets nervous uh, i feel good about it so you should too but you can already see some of these huge basaltic blocks that have toppled down so remember that patch of ground that you're seeing just to our west was at one time level with where i'm standing so we see a vertical drop in the ground up here at the upper end or what we call the head scarp of this rotational slide or slump um, so i think somewhere in here probably good a place as any to see some of the total displacement um, and the extension across this gap here i'll stop right up here and we'll do one more look through before we head out uh, onto the slide yeah, so this is a great vantage point here. You can see some of the tension cracks uh, up here in the head scarp, the horizontal movement out, some of the collapsed basalt blocks falling into this upper uh, tension fracture or head scarp. And then, and then there's another drop beyond uh, that over there. So yeah, about 30 or so feet, maybe 40 feet of vertical displacement from here down to there and then also a significant component of extension from east to west across this thing pretty remarkable um, it's getting late in the day i'll take you out next onto the slide so our next video will be from somewhere out here uh, and maybe i'll take you down to the toe although that's a bigger hike and you can see the sun is kind of low in the sky um, so we're, we're running out of daylight here but we'll take you down now to the scarp or the, uh, the, the uh, step here out onto the slump itself. So I'm back now at the south end of the bluegill slide. We just did a video uh, from up on top. We're looking now right down the trend of the head scarp and where all the separation has occurred here. I'm gonna get out my diagram here. Uh, just to orient you and make sure we're all kind of on the same page. So we started out, um, the first video segment was from the west over here, looking back towards the bluegill slide. And I just did a segment from uh, up above, looking across this gap here. And so this uh, gap right here, the actual uh, breakaway detachment point for the slide is what we're looking at right here. And so what we're going to do next is take you out onto this, the, the slide itself. Now, I didn't draw any of the features here. It looks like it's just a flat, um, you know, fairly uneventful surface. But there's actually smaller uh, fractures running through the basalt up here. And some of those fractures actually extend through uh, the, the sediment and the soil. I suppose to modify this, we'll do this a little bit on the fly. You guys can enjoy this. Um, we've actually got... You know, a little bit of soil up on top that extends through here. And then there's actually just below that 
um, a deposit of gravel. It's actually a formal stratigraphic unit called the uh, Tuana gravel. And so that sits uh, right here. And then we have uh, the basalt. And I don't have the basalt age off the top of my head or what vent it erupted from. So that, that might help a little bit. Um, but we're gonna go out here. And again, there's some other features to be seen out here on this surface. Um, so let's head out there. We'll put all this stuff back in the pack. Hopefully that orients you a little bit. And make way. Now this next section um, will be exciting for some of you. Um, some of you will wish it wasn't seen. This, this little plank used to not be here. <laughs> um, and, if, you know, memory's an interesting thing. I remember back in the day going stepping across right here but it was always a little bit spicy i don't know if it's it was that spicy you know in my memory it was only just a step across i'm sure there's been quite of erosion here so this looks a lot more uh, sketchy and dangerous than it used to be um, but now we have this plank or bridge across a tension fracture a chasm if you will that goes down maybe uh, down here, it's maybe a good 20 feet or so, but thankfully someone put this here so we can just walk across um, But you can see all the fractures in this area and then you get to places like this where you actually do have to uh, step across um, But not too bad. Nothing I feel is a high-risk factor So again the the main escarpment here that drops down maybe probably 50 to 60 feet. I've actually hiked through there and on a windy day that feels really sketchy because the wind's blowing loose rocks off the top and you just never know when something's going to come down. So we won't do that this time. Um, but again, another fracture here. And the interesting thing about coming out this way is, you know, looking down on it from above gives you one perspective. Uh, but I think coming out onto the slide itself gives you another. And if I can find them, I can also take you to the top of the um, climbs. And you can see some of the climbing anchors and kind of get a sense for that. This was actually, a, apparently, this, this occurred all right before I moved to Twin in the early 2000s. But uh, I'm told by some people that this was a somewhat popular climbing area. Remember, these cliffs are new. These cliffs were just exposed in the last 25 years by the movement itself. But this other cliff band that's over this way that we'll head to was actually a, a fairly popular climbing area called Bluegill, Bluegill Crags, um, prior to the movement. Of course, now with the movement and the instability of the whole thing and all the loose rocks, um, I'm definitely not climbing here. I don't know anyone really who routinely climbs here much. And it looks like there's a little solar panel over here. There may still be some monitoring equipment uh, from the USGS. I should probably try to contact someone and see if that's the case. But there's a little solar panel here. They did have some of the data um, that they were able to kind of relay. This may be a little GPS station here so that they can see how this part of the slide is moving and so they've got the little solar panel and they're able to relay that back to um, a database so that's probably looks like it's in good shape thankfully the locals haven't shot it up uh, so again these cracks are all new this is the edge of the cliff that forms the climbing area uh, we might be able to see some of the climbs or anchors over here. I'm gonna step around all this. But yeah, like this is this is moving ground. This is a terra firma that's not so firma. Um, let's see, anything out here? Yeah, I don't wanna get too close over there. Um, but you can see the Bluegill Lake from here. Uh, nice view. Actually, if we step around over here, we might get yeah, nice view of the lake below. Uh, the toe of the slide moving out this way, constricting the creek, which runs through that little narrow gully down there. And then the water 
backing up this way and inundating the trees and forming this lake back upstream to the south on Salmon Falls Creek. Uh, I'll go a little bit further and then probably a little too late in the day and the camera's almost dead on battery so we probably won't be able to do a video from down at the toe of the slide. What you can see down at the toe of the slide though are some trees that are kind of tipped over as the slide is moved to the west. Uh, some of the trees have actually been pushed over a bit. So that's kind of exciting. And there's also big slabs of basalt and rock that have actually been kind of tipped over. So there's our main escarpment back here. But then we have these secondary fractures in the slump block itself that have caught that have um, opened up due to the movement. Uh, these are a little bit smaller. There goes a pigeon. But you can see these going off to the the north here. And then again, just slowing down, panning slowly so people don't get angry. Uh, the escarpment here, just, just tremendous. I mean, to think that this all happened for the most part within a few years is just incredible. Um, so we'll take you down to the west end of the slide. Another big fracture here. Uh, stepping over to another one that runs this way. If you get on Google Earth, um, you'll get a much better appreciation for, I think, the extent and the size of this. I don't know how many acres it comprises off the top of my head, but it's a, it's a good chunk of land, good chunk of uh, cliff face that's failing and sliding. So now we're right above uh, the former rock climbing venue on the basalt cliffs um, and I thought it'd be cool and I know I've seen them here before um, if we saw any of the climbing anchors oh there's some right here so you can see uh, some chains right here on this face and then a little bit further down is uh, a bolt they've been painted red to kind of camouflage but you can see a set of chains for these climbing anchors uh, so all this rock down here Probably the, the more brown rock fell some time ago, but we can see some more gray rock out here, more fresh rock on this talus slope, which is very likely uh, rocks that failed while this thing was moving during the last 25 years. I wonder if we can see an actual source to that. So it looks like my battery's out, so I'm gonna sign off from the bluegill slide.